Hi, welcome to City Scene with Mayor Mike Cahill. I'm your host, Walt Kozmowski. Your Honor, welcome. Hi, hey, Walt. Happy summer. Happy summer to you. So just the two of us today. Mm-hmm. Um, your Honor, we, we've seen a lot of work around the city, various infrastructure projects and things this summer. Um, let's talk a little bit about that. Maybe we could start off with one that I think that's has been talked about in the planning stages for decades, really, uh, a new police station. Mm-hmm. Maybe you can bring us up to date on that, where we sit and what the schedule might be for a new police station. Sure. Okay, so just to remind us all, right, that we we own two acres of land at the front of the coming center. People think of it as part of the coming center, but it's really city oh, property. City, yep. If you're looking towards Cummings from across the street, there's that ATM building up front. Just to the right of the ATM building, right over to the train tracks, is what we own. It's about right. two acres. Yep. Um, and so we've been working for the last year and a half, first engaged a project manager, then an architect, and now a construction manager. So the full team has been in place for a while. Um, spent a lot of time with the department uh, and trying to get a, get a better handle on what their needs are. Uh, and we've got a building that has been schematically designed. Uh, to be about 32,000 square feet, three-story building uh, that will be built on that parcel. Uh, The goal is to begin construction by the end of the calendar year with a hoped-for occupancy by end of spring, beginning of summer 2021. So just about two years from now, they should be moving in, moved in, moving in, and and utilizing the new facility. And they'll all be consulted, because right now they're in, what, four or five different locations, the police department, I think? So, yeah, I mean, the the police station that they're in has been insufficient for a long time, (laughs) a long, long time. And and so they're they're in about 8,500 square feet. They'll be moving into 32,000 square feet, because right now the criminal investigations division is up at the airport, Animal control officers up by the hospital, uh, domestic uh, violence and community impact operations are over by the um, uh, in the old housing authority, a little office right at the front of the uh, Sawyer Road uh, senior housing. Yeah. So they're all over the place and need to be under one roof. Uh, we'll also uh, the plan also is hopefully to move uh, the combined dispatch operation in there eventually when it's open. Yeah. Well, I think it's it's great now after all of these years of talking about it that we can kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm-hmm. Congratulations! Thank yeah. you. And we, we've been doing a lot of work with the uh, with the price tag, trying to make sure that it stays where we can can afford it. It's a it's a challenge given the construction market. Everybody's working. Yeah. So that means when you know when when construction costs are factored in in this type of an economy, bids come in high. So we've been working hard to to try to plan for that and make sure that that we build what the department needs in a, in a cost-effective manner that the city, the people of Beverly can afford. Mm-hmm. So it's, that's a real, that's been our challenge for the last several months, We're working hard at that. Yeah. Now, there's been a lot of stuff going on on, uh, on uh, Cabot Street. Can you kind of tell us what, uh, uh, that's kind of winding down and what's happened there? Not winding down. <laughs> um, so we're, we're doing a couple things at the same time along Cabot. We, we got some state grant money to pair with some, some of our local road and sidewalk money, uh, to rebuild a section of Cabot Street, essentially from where Brown's Bikes was right. down to A&B Burgers. <clears throat> and the goal is to do it, well, the, we're, we are building it as a complete streets rebuild um, to make the corridor safer for everyone's use, um, really to, to slow down car traffic and make sure that the vehicles share the, the space and the roadway properly with pedestrians and bicyclists and that our downtown space is as vibrant as it can be. Uh, so there, there'll be some lane narrowing, uh, which will widen some sidewalk space, uh, more bump outs at, at key intersections. The, the point of the bumping out is to shorten the distance that somebody has to walk, to walk in the street, the street when they're in yeah. a crosswalk. Right. Uh, and that helps to calm and slow traffic as well. Yeah. Uh, improve sight lines by the person who's waiting to cross being further out without being exposed to the traffic. Right. right. Uh, and that's a design that's not ours. That's a worldwide design. That's how mm. cities are being rebuilt all over the world, uh, including all over the country. So um, that's all happening. But in preparation for it, we have a project ongoing to um, cement line our uh, water main down, down the center of Cabot Street. The water main is in good shape in, in the sense that it should be good for another 50 years, 
the cement lining of the inside of it is a, a technique to kind of restore its full integrity and extend its life by a long, long mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's going on. And the uh, National Grid has been uh, upgrading the gas service. Yeah. So those two things are what you've been seeing going yeah. on out there. Yeah. Uh, the next section of the work, the next part of the work will be uh, sidewalk reconstruction followed by the roadway reconstruction. And yeah. the goal is to have it complete before the end of calendar year. Yeah, oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look spiffy. <laughs> yes, no, it, it'll be, it'll be a, a big improvement. Yeah, so let's take us down to One Water Street. Uh, can you give us an update on what's going on there? Sure. <clears throat> so we know the city has owned the old McDonald's parcel, One Water Street, for about 20 years now, a little more than 20 years. Um, and for that long, the city's been trying to do something productive with it. Uh, it's been a hard road to travel. Um, there have been a lot of things that have stood in the way. We've systematically been able to remove those barriers, first by removing the designated port area, mm -hmm, which yeah. was a state law that, that, that said you could only use the parcel for certain things. Correct. Uh, the, the state agreed with us upon study that it didn't make sense to, to keep that right. designation. So that opened things up. Uh, there are some public access and enjoyment requirements on the parcel because we, we bought it partly with state grant money. Um, and we worked out a, an agreement with the State Office of Environmental Affairs to facilitate that provision of public access in a way that allows us to still, you know, have a restaurant right. built down there. And so we were able to finally award, um, uh, award a bid to a gentleman named Martin Bloom and his partners and, and Martin Bloom owns the um, Mission Oak Grill in Newburyport, right. Mission on the Bay in Swampscott, a couple of restaurants in the South End in Boston. And he's been somebody who has built and operated restaurants for about 45 years in the region. Uh, he was one of the um, main owners of the Vinnie Testa chain of restaurants for many years in Boston. So he's, he's a veteran. He knows how to do this. He also knows how to build on the waterfront, having... Right, having rebuilt right. the, uh, the old was the old Red Rocks and turn, turned it into Mission on the Bay over in the Swampscott Lynn Line. Yep. Um, so he's in the process of going through the state permitting, the required state permitting, which is Chapter 91 for public waterfront access, and MEPA, which is a state environmental oversight uh, set of regs. And then there are the local, uh, there's local process. He has to go through a couple of our local boards and commissions. Right. Uh, and that... That is all going on or will be going on in the coming months. The goal and hope is that he gets cleared to start construction before winter. His target date for opening is next summer, so okay. a year from now. So about a year from, year from now. So, but he'll be, getting, he'll be uh, putting the shovel into the ground, as they say, sometime before the end of the year. That's the hope. We, as the, the city, will be raising the McDonald's building and making the site ready for okay. him to come in and develop. Oh, so that. that's going to be on the city's nickel. Then. That's on the city, and that was a part of the, uh, the RFP that we put out to anybody who would respond. Uh, one of the things we, we determined along the way was really necessary is to make the site ready for whoever yeah. would come in. Yeah. Um, his plan is to open a restaurant that will be uh, an oyster bar, seafood restaurant, and kind of a broader m menu of typical American fare. Yeah. He'll also have a takeout window on the first floor, that will be a seasonal operation. Right. Okay. So that'll be a great opportunity for people who want to walk around down to the waterfront, yeah, no, no. sit out at a picnic table, and enjoy some takeout food as well. Excellent, excellent. Well, let, let's go to another part of the city, mm -hmm. um, the, this so-called Whole Foods Plaza, which now is called uh, North Shore Crossing, I believe. Is that the official name of it? Did you notice? Yeah. You see the sign? <laughs> it, it, the sign just seemed to pop up overnight about uh, two or three mm -hmm. weeks ago. So, so I, I live right by the Montserrat train station, and when I get off the highway, that's my most typical way in right, and out is, yeah. is at uh, the Brimble Ave exit. So, yes, it's, I saw it. North Shore <laughs> Crossing is the name of the, of the plaza. Um, the goal right now, the target date, is that Whole Foods will open in October. That's what I'm being told. Okay. So right. you, can, are, you can see a lot of activity down there. The bank's already the operational, bank is, uh, yeah. and they'll be bringing on other tenants as they fit them out between now and then. Yeah. Now, let, let's uh, change gears just a little bit, uh, Mike. Now, we know that your administration has been a focused, uh, uh, one of its focuses is, has been on environmental sustainability. <clears throat> of course, I, I attended a workshop that the city uh, had a couple months sure. ago on the seaside sustainability. Uh, talk about the importance of that to the city and what you hope to achieve by these workshops and what, what direction, uh, do, what, what sort of an outcome do you hope to have? Sure. So I guess there are a couple of ways that we're looking at 
um, environmental issues or climate change. One is the impacts of climate change that we're feeling already. And being a coastal community, we need to be aware of coastal flooding sure. that, that can come with storms, particularly, uh, but eventually with sea level rise. So we had the, that series of nor'easters a year and a half ago, and they did some significant damage That's to our right. seawall at Lynch Park. Yep. Um, so we have been in the process of trying to make those repairs, working with the federal government to try to cut through all the paperwork and get the, the, the promised funds to help us make those repairs. But the workshop that you mentioned was part of our municipal vulnerability planning process that we're, we were required to undertake in order to become eligible for more state funding. And that's about really improving our, our both hardening our coastline and improving our stormwater management systems so that when we have significant storm events or rain events, we're able to handle all that. Um, so it's both upland and right at the coast. So that's one piece of of sustainability or looking at the environment is how to deal with the changes that are already here. The other piece is what are we doing as a city to cut down on our greenhouse gas emissions? Right. Greenhouse gases are the, are the, the big cause of, of um, global warming. Um, and so we've been working as a city for the past several years to try to, well, really longer than that. Before I became mayor, we became a green community. Mayor Scanlon, when I was on the city council, we all uh, signed on to become a green community under a state uh, designation. And we've been working to improve uh, energy efficiency at all of our uh, city and school buildings over the right. last several years. We got a grant about a year and a half ago to change out all, there's about 3,800 street yeah. lights yep. around the city with LED bulbs yep. uh, to both save money and decrease the amount of electricity that we use. Correct, yeah. Um, and so we're working hard to decrease our greenhouse gas output from our vehicles to our buildings to managing our waste stream. Yeah. Um, good. Sorry. Now, no, also, you, I think you have some plans for some solar installations at, at the dump and, and, some, and some issues with composting that are kind of tie into that. Share Absolutely. that with us. There's so many different fronts that we're working on. And, and so it's what we do as a city, a city government, right? Our vehicle fleet, our buildings, our, our waste. And then beyond that, it's what the city at large, 41,000 people and all the businesses, how we all are become more environmentally um, friendly, or should I say, how we transition to burning less fossil fuel and using more renewable. You just mentioned the, the old uh, landfill between Brimble Ave and Centerville going northbound on the highway. We've been working this for several years, and we finally, finally, finally have all the, all the approvals and all the agreements that we've got a developer, Blue Way Solar, who are going to build a nearly five megawatt solar array on that old landfill. They are in the first block of the new state uh, solar incentive program, so they're guaranteed. Every, everything, everything's moving, and we're really excited. Their goal is to start construction this summer or fall. Yeah. Um, the city will be an off-taker, meaning we'll use some of that electricity, which will save us money. Yeah. And the developer is going to offer a community solar offering to people within the community to sign on. Oh, okay. As a homeowner, when I did my audit a few years ago, like most of us have done, yeah. I was told that my roof, my, my home roof was not appropriate for oh, solar yeah. because the way it faces right. doesn't get the right amount of sun. Correct. So rather than do solar on my own rooftop, I'm a candidate as an individual for, yeah. homeowner to buy into a community solar deal with, with something like this development. And so that'll be offered to people all over the community. Yeah. Um, and you can do your own mini power purchasing agreement with the developer to get savings on your own bill. And also, by being part of that, you as an individual homeowner get to help contribute to making that renewable solar happen. Yeah. Now, will, will the city own the installation or will that be owned by that company? Uh, that no, city owns the land. Okay. We'll have, uh, we'll have an annual pilot payment by the developer as well as uh, a lease payment. Okay. As well as they'll be paying taxes on the equipment. Right. So the, the contract that we've signed and the city council's approved has the city bringing in about a quarter of a million dollars a year off the property for the next 20 years with then a five-year uh, option mm -hmm. to extend. Mm -hmm. um, so no, we're, and we won't own the equipment. Uh, so the, the, they'll, they'll own it. The they'll maintain it. And right. at, the end of the, at the end of the process, 20, 25 years from now, they'll be required to decommission and take it out, unless it makes sense to extend it to, out. Yeah. 
or yeah. replace it with, with more modern equipment at that point in time. Yeah. Um, and, and our grid needs to be, this renewable energy needs to happen everywhere. We're yeah. just trying to be, do our part and host as much of it as we can. Yeah. Well, I'm one of the lucky people. I, I put in a, a solar installation on my house. Mm-hmm. Uh, a year, well, in fact, it'll be a year, like right this this week, I mm-hmm. think it'll be, and it's outperformed our, my expectations. Uh, how how many acres is that the land that we're talking about? The old uh, fill, dump fill. You would ask. Yeah. We're, we our parcel is maybe a little shy of 40 acres. Okay. This will be using up about 14 of the acres. Okay, so it won't be completely covered with, uh, no, with the solar, no, solar panels. No, you, you'll see it from the highway. It'll be yeah. a little more up front before the slope. Yeah. Now, will it, will it have a, a, a constant uh, um, um, orientation, or will it have, have that ability to direct the, the panels towards the sunlight? To do, or you, no, it'll be, it'll be, my understanding is it'll be fixed. Fixed. Okay, fixed situated in a way that it gets the maximum, you know, maximum amount of sunlight yeah, daily yeah, yeah, on a get Sunday that day. southerly orientation. Yeah. Okay. Now, now and let me just say on, on the community solar, the developer is going to be publicizing and reaching directly out to homeowners all over the city. Yeah. So people will, will you know, they'll definitely be solicited and they'll hear about that. Yeah. So if it makes sense for them, they, they won't miss an opportunity. Okay. And, and when did we say that that might be operational? I don't think we mentioned that. Any idea? Well, I'm trying to remember what the what the construction window is. I mean, they want to get it up and running as fast as they can. They're looking to start construction this summer. I think it's about a year, yeah. a year long process, maybe less. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, something that's been going on, uh, a new initiative, uh, is the new uh, Beverly Master Plan. Uh, that project uh, has gotten underway because our old master plan. I think the last time you were on, we talked about the fact that that was about sixteen, eighteen years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, what's what's happened so far with the master plan project? Who has been involved in, and what kind of what, what is the next date of, 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 a, of a happening or an event? For, uh, yes, no, I'm, I'm trying to remember when we filmed, but we had our first public workshop May 14th yeah. and we had over 200 people. Attend. Right. It, it was, was well wonderful. Attended. Yeah, I mean, we're writing a master plan for the first time in 15 years. The goal is that it will serve the city as a blueprint for what we do and what we become for the next 10 to 15 years. It's really an expression of the community's values and the community's goals for how we, how we move and develop and grow and what we, what we preserve and retain and what we choose to change and all of that. Um, so we do have four community workshops planned. We had the first. The second one is, I wrote it down, July 23rd. Yeah. Um, there's information on the city website about it. Uh, we we just were planning to put up a banner across the top of the website to make an easy click for people. So if they go to beverlyma.gov, they can see right at the top of the page a way to click onto a separate site that's all about the master plan. Yep. On that site is a, um, uh, a survey that we want to get as many people as possible Correct. to fill out. Yep. There'll be two surveys, the one that's up now and then a later survey in the fall. And so our goal is to get thousands of people involved in weighing in yeah. because, you know, this is our chance as a community to revisit um, values that we set in the current master plan and answer our own questions about who are we as a community, where do we want to be in 10 years, yeah. and how do we get there. Yeah. And, you know, I, I should uh, talk to Kevin about putting uh, an announcement to that effect on BevCam on our channels, urging mm-hmm. people, giving them the website, urging them to fill out that, that survey. Absolutely. Yeah. We're also going to do community meetings, um, neighborhood meetings, rather, all mm-hmm. over the city okay. over the next few months. Okay. So we'll be working to schedule those at you know, at public sites right. uh, in the different neighborhoods and, and have a, you know, every neighborhood has a different view of the community sure. as well. So yeah. trying to have those those conversations as we go. Yeah. Now, uh, one thing I, I, I kind of left out from before, but um, the Briscoe School, repurposing mm-hmm. Briscoe, uh, where do we stand on that, Mayor? So first I want to say, because it always comes up, people will call and say, well, why aren't we building the police station there? Why don't we move City Hall to there? Three years ago now, we we underwent an almost year-long process of looking at City Hall, looking at the police station, looking at Briscoe, and trying to determine what's the best future course for those city assets. Mm -hmm. And we determined through that process that it would cost about twice as much to build a police station there and rehab the building into City Hall offices there than it will to build a new police station on the land we own at Cummings Center and then we have the existing police station for municipal use. 
Um, so it, that really that decision made itself. It was a, a cost factor of, you know, 30 to 35 million to 60 to 70 million. Sure. So yeah. the, the difference. So so we are building the police station where we are on the front of the coming center campus. And we have recently put an RFP out for Briscoe request for proposals. We're required by state law that any time we do something to to uh, transact or dispose of, of a public asset, it has to be done through that in process. a certain way. Yeah. The school committee and the city council both voted last year to surplus Briscoe right. as no longer needed right. by, the, by the city. Um, so we have an RFP out to sell it. We've worked with every developer who had any who we could identify, who had any interest at all in walking through the building, looking at the building, trying to talk through how it might be used in the future. We had numerous public meetings where people had the chance to kind of just talk through and weigh in on what they want to see. Right. So the values that the community expressed were, one, preserve the building, don't tear it down. Two, um, keep the green space around the building for public enjoyment. So what that means is we're going to keep ownership of the field behind the building, mm -hmm. and we're going to keep ownership of as much of, of the green space, that little kind of wedge-shaped little park in front of it, <coughs> as we can. Yeah. And the RFP asks the respondents to, to keep that in mind that as in they mind. plan for what they need for parking response, and yeah. circulation in the front of the building. Um, we also decided collectively that the types of things that people are willing to see in the building are uh, hotel, office space, Artists live work and senior affordable housing. Right. Um, specifically, no market rate housing, no, no high end market rate that we're seeing in other places, particularly close to the train station. Um, so in the RFP, it lays out the different types of uses that will be entertained. Yeah. Uh, and that's the goal is, is, is to have something, some one of those things or some combination of those things happen. Yeah. In the now, when is the deadline for response to the RFP? Mid-August. Mid-August. So we're mm -hmm. talking about uh, roughly two months uh, from now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, th and, and so the hope, I'm sorry, the hope is that we'll be able to award <clears throat> one, a developer and they'll be able to close on the property before the end of the year. And then they start the process of, of, of trying to redevelop it. Yeah. Now, there, there's been a lot of uh, building, a lot of activity uh, that has been going on down near Rantoul and now near the, the train station. Mm -hmm. Can you can you kind of uh, summarize that for, for our viewers? So what's been going on along Rantoul specifically is a result of the master plan that we have had in place for 15 years, because the master planning process 15, 17 years ago identified a real housing shortage and a need for more housing. Also identified a need for a strategy to bring our downtown back. Yeah. Uh, so that stretch of Rantoul and right in front of the depot was an overlay zone that was a recommendation of the last master plan that was then put in place by the mayor and the city council. It was around 2004 or so. Yeah. Um, somewhere in that time frame. So that redevelopment, the mixed-use redevelopment that's been going on, is a recognition that we need more housing, that in a sustainable community, an environmentally sustainable, in a quality-of-life way, the one place, excuse me, that it makes sense to put more housing is where there's a train station, right. is where there's public transportation, Correct, yeah. and where there are, not in every case, but in many cases, People can walk to the services. They can walk to the store, sure, can walk sure. to the restaurant. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that no cars come with those new housing units, but fewer cars come per unit. Yeah. And each each occupant uses their car less than they would if they're living in the neighborhoods further away from downtown. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that so-called smart growth sort of mm -hmm. sort of uh, development. Yeah. Um, now, the um, the. Budget process, I just want to segue, uh, has been going on for, for our viewers. Maybe you can explain that, that uh, the city budget doesn't start January 1st and go to December 31st. It's like it's like middle of the year. So mm -hmm. June is really the big, big month where you, you funnel all of your city departments through. Uh, January through June. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but, but publicly, you're right, publicly the city council holds their public hearings so they get their 
you know, their in-depth look at our proposed budget. Right. And they and, you know, they they're able to uh, perform their function as a legislative oversight of the executive branch. Yeah. Um, so, yes, the budget season for us is really early calendar year right through June, because first the school budget gets passed by the school committee. And that is a process that, you know, it all runs through that time. Councilors, by the way, city councilors are looking at the budget for several months, too. They don't sure, just look yeah. at it for a few weeks in June. Of course. And yeah. we work with them on, on and we work with them throughout the year on how different departments are performing with their budgets and what their needs are to deliver the services that they're supposed to deliver. Um, but, yes, again, what people see for sure are the public hearings that are held you know, I think yep. there are five or six different evenings of public hearings oh, wow. where several department heads at a time come before the city council and there's discussion about, you know, what they're doing, what they're, how they're performing and what the asks are for the coming year budget. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the council's final vote on, on the proposed budget that we put before them is actually this Thursday night. Yeah, it's coming, coming right up. And I'd like to remind our viewers that, of course, BevCam... Uh, in addition to our regular coverage of uh, city council meetings, uh, we cover all of these hearings so that if people miss this, uh, they can go to our website and they can see uh, live real time all the discussion that was uh, that had taken place along mm -hmm. all these uh, budget items. Well, we only have a, a minute or so left, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Mayor. Any anything you want to uh, uh, add on a cherry on the top of this discussion? Or <laughs> oh, gosh. Um... Oh, there's, there's a lot happening, and, and, and here we are into summertime. So the, it's a great time of year in Beverly. Um, homecoming week is that first 10 days of August, typically. Yeah. So, you know, please, a lot, uh, a lot of fun. For, for anybody who, who's looking forward to some of our, you know, traditional summer activities, you, it's, it's easy enough to check things on our website. Yeah. It's always, in, and we try to make it uh, workable. So yeah. beverlyma.gov for master plan, for project updates, uh, for the, the homecoming schedule, all of that. Yeah, and I, I like to add that one of our, our studio manager here, Kim Outline, his band is going to be one of the bands that are going to be playing. Look at that. During, nice plug. <laughs> during, during homecoming. So I'll Can get we that get Kim on camera for, for that? For Kim. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I'd like to, on that note, I'd like to remind our viewers <laughs> that you've been watching City Scene with Mayor Mike Cahill. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Walt. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and we'll see you next time.